Hi, I'm Louis, Head of Acquisitions at My Art Broker. If you're thinking of acquiring a Rohr Lichtenstein print, here are a few things that you might want to bear in mind. Rohr Lichtenstein was an American pop artist who was very prolific in the 1960s. He was born in 1923, he passed in 1997, he was a contemporary of Andy Warhol, of James Rosenquist, of Jasper Johns. In many ways, Roy Lichtenstein was the godfather of pop art. He was very interested in comic books, mechanical reproduction of imagery. He was fascinated by the way that newspapers were printed and bende dots and things like that. So Roy Lichtenstein was seeking to marry industrial techniques with art. So one of the most recognizable aspects of his artwork are obviously the Ben Day dots. They're featured very prominently in a number of his pieces, including his Crying Girl prints or his Drowning Girl prints. So the Ben Day process is a printing and photo engraving technique. In many respects, it can be thought of as the pixel of the past. So Roy Lichtenstein produced a number of different types of prints. There are offset lithographs, regular lithographs, and a good place to start is obviously perhaps the more conservatively priced pieces, such as As I Open Fire, which is a triptych, it's an offset lithograph, generally sold at very affordable price points at auction, in galleries, online, and via online brokerage platforms. Okay, there, there are several considerations in the Lichtenstein market. You know, fakes are one thing, and we'll talk about that. But the thing I can't emphasize enough is that there are major condition issues with his prints. Two of the classic early Lichtenstein prints were Reverie and uh, Sweet Dreams Baby. Okay, those are the ones everybody wanted. Early 60s, they had words in them. That's what collectors wanted. And these are prints that are, you know, six figures now to buy. They became so sought after um, well, let's backtrack just a moment. A lot of these prints were worth nothing when they first came out in the 60s, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, who knows. And people hung them and often in direct sunlight. I mean, a lot of them faded. I don't know what people were thinking about, but again, nobody cared. They weren't worth anything. So it's extremely hard to find one in mint condition or even very good condition. And unscrupulous types in the art world noticed this. And what started happening is they, they found a way to rescreen the prints, which at first I thought, nah, that can't be done. It can be done, and it has been done. So we're getting into a bit of, well, some authentication questions here, because what happens if you're offered one of those? Let's say the person is being totally transparent and says, yes, this one was screened, but hey, it's signed by Roy, numbered da 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 da. What do you do? Um, I'd say just say no, personally. You, you can't say it's a fake. You can't say it's a forgery. You can say it has been altered. And this is, it has value, but it's not, it's, it's just one of those funny authentication questions. I mean, I'd buy one if, if it was super inexpensive. But better to stay away. I'd rather have one that's even slightly faded than one that's been screened. And a lot of people who have these rescreens, they don't even know they have them. They can't tell, but it can be, you can tell. You know, the, the ink, it doesn't sit right on the page. So that's one of the issues with authentication. Condition, all right? The other thing that is worth discussing is that we do see uh, Roy Lichtenstein posters that have been altered. Roy was one of those artists who produced a lot of posters. And the tricky part is some of them are original silk screens that he even signed. So they have value, but they're not considered additions that have been numbered and so on. So they have limited value. In other words, it's, it's again, one of those gray areas. I mean, there are posters that are just offset lithographs that are cheap, you know, $50 posters. But there are some where he actually, you know, they're, they're high quality and worth thousands of dollars. Um, the thing to look out for is people have taken these high quality posters, you know, the ones with the actual silk screening, and they've cut away, um, how do I put it? 
they, they'll take an exacto knife and a metal ruler and they'll cut away the text from the poster so they've got the image and it's signed and the signature is Roy's signature and they frame it up and they'll try to sell it as an original you know and it's like uh -huh. so that's one of the things i'd advise people to look out for Roar Lichtenstein's market has shown consistent strength in terms of transaction volume. Over the past five years, the average selling price has increased by 5%, and today the average selling point is around the £30,000 mark. Roy Lichtenstein's market is what we consider to be a mature market, and truly his work represents a classic long-term investment in the art market. This is just subjective on my part, but Roy Lichtenstein probably had the highest batting average, I would call it, of any major American artist. In other words, he rarely faltered. Almost everything he did was good, and a lot of it was great. It was just one of those quirky, you know, quirky things. I also tell people, and again, this is highly subjective, if, if anything ever happens to the art market, if it ever, goes through a hard time and collapses. And it's happened before, but it always seems to come back. Um, the three safest bets, in my opinion, are Lichtenstein, Warhol, and Alexander Calder. And the reason is their work seems to have the widest appeal. It's easily identifiable. There's a lot of it, fun to live with. And it's just, you know, it's in the art history books. It's in all the museums. So. Uh, Lichtenstein is probably, and of the three, he's probably the safest bet because he's produced the least amount of work of those guys. There are a number of prints in Roy Lichtenstein's oeuvre that are more sought after than others, naturally. Um, something that is particularly in demand at the moment are his portfolios, so complete sets. A few names of Roy Lichtenstein pieces that are especially desirable at the moment are his Brushstroke series, his Reflections series, the comic book heroines, so think about The Crying Girl or The Drowning Girl, and of course his Explosions. A few things to bear in mind when acquiring a Roy Lichtenstein print are condition and authenticity. So for many years, a lot of seasoned Roy Lichtenstein collectors always sought out two specific prints from his oeuvre, the 1965 Rêverie, as well as Sweet Dreams Baby. However, those prints are difficult to come across in excellent condition. So really those works are probably better for collectors who know exactly what they want from Roy Lichtenstein and not so much first time collectors. Since these two prints were realized such a long time ago, unfortunately, many of these impressions are now faded. Condition is key. As I always say, condition, condition, condition. When acquiring a Roy Lichtenstein print, you might want to think about a number of factors such as, has it been kept out of the sun? Are the colors still original and authentic? Has it been framed? Has it been protected by UV protected glass? Or was it plexiglass? Was it stored flat or was it stored uh, in a rolled up manner, which unfortunately is something that sometimes tends to happen. Have a look at the edges, have a look at whether the edges have recoiled or not, have a look and make sure that there aren't any signs of wear and tear, things like that. If you're looking to buy a Roar Lichtenstein print, you can either do so at auction, you can buy one in an art gallery, you can have a look online, or you can buy one via an online brokerage, so via a private dealer. When acquiring an artwork at auction, something to bear in mind is once you've placed your bid and that you've secured that purchase, you will have to pay for a buyer's premium on top of the hammer price. Generally, that's approximately 25% on top of the hammer price. If you're looking to acquire an artwork in an art gallery, you might want to do a little bit of research on whether or not the price points been communicated with you is on par with where the art, that specific artwork sits in the market. So just do a little bit of research and have a look and see what recent auction results were, as that will give you a good indication of what the insurance value of the artwork is. If you're looking to buy an artwork online, 
a few pitfalls to bear in mind are there are a lot of scammers online, so you know don't be fooled. Make sure that the artwork comes with full provenance and paperwork. And once again, if the deal is too good to be true, it's best to walk away from it. And finally, you can always go through an art broker, in which case that art broker will be able to source the specific Liechtenstein print that you were looking to acquire. And then a private sale can be conducted. And generally that is completely free of charge, so you'll get the best price for that, for that artwork as possible. Demand for Rohr Liechtenstein prints has never been higher, so if you're looking to acquire one of his prints, now might be the right time.